James, welcome to the university. Hello. I have a scenario for you, okay? Um, you're working as a clinician on a busy NHS ward. A patient tells you that she wants to opt out of organ donation. However, she passes away before any paperwork was done. Her son is a medical student. You need to tell him about her wishes um, now that she's passed away. How do you approach this? Um, yeah. Um, okay, so I think it's important to initially <coughs> like, primarily think about why, you know, no, so sorry, um, how you've got to respect the patient's autonomy. So in this case, She's specifically said to the doctor that she that she uh, would not like to have her organs donated. Mm -hmm. So it's important that not only uh, that you would approach the um, situation with empathy while speaking to the medical student about it, but also you know that it's important that you would respect the patient's wishes and that obviously you wouldn't go ahead with doing anything to, to do with their um, body with science. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so I can see that what you're thinking there. Um, now, you, the dilemma you have now is, um, so the patient didn't want any organ donation, but the son, who's a medical student, um, he wants the organs to be donated. How would you handle that situation? I think if the patient has directly spoken to you and said, you know, this is not something that I want to happen. Um, it's important that you would respect that patient's wishes, you know, um, even for the son as well, I think he should understand that, you know, maintaining patient and doctor trust is like extremely important in medicine. So mm -hmm. even though this patient has passed away, it's important to respect the wishes. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's important that, that, that her wishes were reinforced and that, you know, it wasn't donated to science because that's obviously what she wanted. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay there. I'll stay there. So this is a classic um, scenario. Um, uh, I think it's from is it last year or the year before. I can't be sure because I do that many questions. Uh, this is how they're going to ask you questions. They're not going to say, oh, what do you think of organ donation? Do you know what I mean? It doesn't happen anymore. It used to happen when he went to uni, when I went to uni. It happened 20 years ago, all right? Now, with you guys, it's a lot more contextual. So can you see how they've built it into a scenario? And they've not just made it straightforward, what do you think of organ donation? Yeah. Why do you think that topic came up in the last year or two? Any thoughts? Changes from Exactly. It's a hot topic, isn't it? Yeah. It still is. Uh, you know, you know, at the moment how um, we're all opted in by default. You have to opt out now, don't you? Know that, don't you? Whereas prior to that ruling, it was an opt-in system. What was the issues around that? What was the problems, or you know, even if someone would want to, but didn't really bother, or absolutely they, they, we were missing out of potential donors because that's life isn't it quite often we've just not got around to it we have too many things to do too busy so yeah um we were losing donors from that from that point of view um we were also um you know the scenario tells you of somebody who doesn't want their organs don donated but you also had scenario where people were okay about donating if you ask them individually but actually the family would afterwards say no no we'd rather not there was a lot of that happening you see um so there's something about thinking about hot topics remember that discussion we had yeah what's going on out there i'm thinking you know yeah so is it it's an opt-out system now what are the pros of that now why have they done that why not the older system of opt-in so you need to analyze it critically think about it um do you guys, uh, I've, did I tell you about debating things at home? Rhetoric. Have you heard of rhetor rhetorical arguments? Or rhetorics? Yeah. You know, 
there's actually a whole science behind rhetoric, which is putting yourself in a position that you may not be comfortable with, may not make sense, but you still put yourself in that position. Because that's the harder point to argue. You know, the top debaters around us, that's what they do. That's how you um, practice to be great debaters. Um, you put yourself in positions that you have to defend, which you wouldn't do naturally. But actually, there's always two sides to an argument, and often more than two sides. Um, so, so, so that's that's the kind of um, history behind this. It's not, uh, you know, have you heard of what's going on about organ donation? What are your views on it? No, they've put it into a scenario, basically, um, because it's multi-layered, isn't it? What else are they testing here in a scenario like this? Okay. And how are you and the yes. Absolutely. Do you remember uh, we discussed ethics as our, one of our major, you know, issue that we're going to bring up in our answers? Ethics, which you actually mentioned, didn't you? Yeah. You actually mentioned autonomy, but thinking back to it, if you was to watch the video, do you think you went into it? No, I didn't really speak about it too much. I just said the word. Autonomy. I'd rather you did that, you know, isn't it, Imran? I'd rather you did that because yeah. uh, that would get you a tick. But what would separate you away from your good students, from the excellent students? I mean, only one. How, what would make you those uh, an excellent student? I'd say going into it a little bit more, possibly. Yeah. Some, maybe talking, you could even like sort of mention sort of, you know, some may argue that you may be doing harm if the doctor, like the medical student wants yeah. you to donate this body, maybe she has organs which could be used for other other people. So are you causing harm to other people by not potentially doing this? Are you doing good by not potentially doing this? So mm. you could really go go into it a little bit more mm. and speak a bit more about autonomy and say really like really explain why it is, you know, so mm. she clearly has said to this doctor, this is what I want and for pay for, you know, yeah you to give patients that sort of patient yeah. center care you always need to yeah sort of um like do what they want well i forgot what the word is for that but mm. you know they have they have the authority over their own care yeah. essentially yeah so if, if they do not want that then mm -hmm. you don't you don't have the authority to sort of say no mm. we're doing it anyway yeah you know yeah I mean? so can you see you've said a lot more Absolutely. you know so what i want you to do is relax you guys know this stuff that's another big thing to take away. Uh, and I've done this for so many years. Often I find you guys know your stuff. Why wouldn't you? You're very clever people. So from some of the best schools in the country, right? Best grades behind you. You guys are our future leaders. You can do this, yeah? And you've got to keep telling that to yourself. So you see, I don't want you to list autonomy. I want you to go into it. There's an autonomy about my patient who said this and wanted to do this as in opting out they have a right um, but then of course there are other considerations i.e potentially not benefiting harming other people within the vicinity who won't gain from that organ of course and so there's a harm issue here you know um, if we look at the autonomy of the son who is the next of kin and probably would decide on issues of estate and matters after somebody's passed away does he not have a certain amount of autonomy over this issue, you know. Do you know legally where you stand <coughs> in this issue? Do you guys know? <coughs> you don't have to know. Is it the next of kin that would be able to decide and they would be able to opt in or out? So that's what you would think. Most people say that, but believe it or not, legally, the next of kin doesn't have that right. Would you believe it? They don't. No. The, 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 they have a kind of a courtesy. Yeah. Uh, they have a courtesy element to the discussion, i.e., um, you know, your father's, I'm sorry, your father's passed away. Um, you know, we think the organs would really help. Um, you know, what do you think about it? So that's what we do normally. We talk to the next of kin. And more often than not, because of courtesy, because you don't want to upset family, etc. Um, you go along with the next of kin's big wishes. That's the re how it works out. But believe it or not, by the letter of the law, if the, you know, because... Once somebody is deceased, actually the crown, the crown has the overall responsibility for you. Uh, the crown, i.e. the law, actually stipulates 
if that person's organ is really needed because there is statute by law as in it's an opt-in or an opt-out system um, it could turn around and say actually your father wanted to donate yes it's not written down we know that and we're satisfied that he wanted to donate and therefore we will take the organ even if the next of can object so the crown can do that the doctors can do that because it's being done for the greater ethical good which is there's another person who will live as a consequence it's not because of uh, resources it's not because of money it's not because of anything like that it's because you are saving another life you know and the only thing in the way would be the next of kin who's objecting so actually the letter of the law is you can overrule that person there's a, there's a lot of power that you have within uh, um, uh, as, as a medical body I don't it's not a decision you'd make individually of course it's uh, something that's done as a, as a, as a multidisciplinary team within the hospital setting um, but yeah, that's the root, root. They won't expect you to know this as students going into medicine. Um, but so you might say, look, I'm not sure about the exact legalities here. I, I guess a person like, you know, who's decided they don't want their organ donated, I guess they have some kind of an autonomy, you know? And whilst you weren't there, the son, we were there when they said they don't want their organs harvested, you know? And so we may, there's a strong reason why we would um, stick to that. Yeah? So, your answer was a good answer. Um, there's one or two other things that I felt were could have been done there to make it an excellent answer. Any thoughts? Anything else you think we could have done? Um, well, there wasn't anything like, I wasn't, I, I felt like I wasn't really able to reflect on any of my own experiences or skills mm. in that. Yeah. I don't know if that's particular to that answer, mm. like, because obviously it's sort of, so, sort of like an ethical dilemma. Mm. I don't know if I have much ability to mm. reflect about myself and my own skills in that. It's not um, always appropriate either, yeah. you know, you might not think, well, actually, I'm not coming. You yeah. know what I mean? I feel like the question mm. didn't really allow for me to sort of go into much reflection. <laughs> um, I guess you could sort of say like maybe if you were to, you could possibly say something about maybe you know reflecting back the doctor mm. could he have um, you know in, in future for the next for um, could he implement that he gets that paperwork done straight away as like as soon as this person's said it so potentially by learning from the mistake of that it avoids any issue arising in the future similar to this so I guess you could get in that element of reflection even though it's not really about you. Mm. You could talk about how the doctor could reflect on his own mistake, but mistake or perhaps, oh, perhaps how procedures yeah. could be yeah. improved. Yeah, yeah, you exactly. could do that. You could do that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to um, park this question. You have a rest, um, and um, you know you might have picked up one or two um, nuggets of advice from what we've discussed so far. Let's see how the next person does with their question and um, uh, then when we come back to you um, before we do that we'll go through answering structure yeah. and then try again with another question see how things happen yeah yeah okay yeah brilliant Thank super you. well done well done james